My name is Peter Hessler, and I'm a nonfiction writer. I grew up in a small, relatively small town in, in Missouri, um, but, but I did want to go overseas. I wanted to learn other things. And I knew I wanted to write, but I wasn't sure how. You know, I wasn't sure what kind of writing I was going to do, fiction or nonfiction. And I had the idea that what I needed was some time to explore a little bit. And so I spent about six months traveling around the world. This was 1994. I showed up in Beijing, got off the train, and something about the city really grabbed me. I mean, you could really, there was a tangible energy to China. Um, I ended up extending my stay um, during that trip. I think I probably spent six weeks in China. Um, and by the time I was done with that, I decided, you know, I would like to go back and really live here and, 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 and try to, to, to learn something about this place. Even five years before I went to China, um, you couldn't have done this kind of work because a foreigner couldn't have had this level of contact with a Chinese person. And, and so this is really the first time I feel like that society has been open enough for a foreigner to show up, learn the language, and, and talk very deeply with people and, and, and to really get to understand their lives, their values. There's always been a tendency to see a place like China in very political terms. I think this is partly because it's a communist country, it's run by the Communist Party. And from my perspective, living in China, starting especially the way that I started as a Peace Corps volunteer in a small community, teaching in a small college, um, it gave me a very different starting point. And, and I really wanted to write about ordinary people in China. I, I didn't want to start with an issue or start with a political idea. I wanted to start with an individual, start with a community. Oi, wait, wait, Jima. I spent more than a decade living in China, and, and at the end of that period, I decided that I wanted to make sure that as a writer, I continued to learn new things and to be challenged in new ways, and I felt like it was time to make a shift, um, and that's when my wife and I moved to the United States. But our goal now is to move to the Middle East and, and to spend some time living in Egypt and writing about that part of the world. I mean, the fact that it's exciting right now is great, but I would be interested in it regardless. I like. I like learning languages, and I intend to spend much of the next year really studying Arabic. And uh, you know, I believe that I'm still young enough to, to, to pick up a, another language, uh, even a hard language. Receiving a MacArthur Fellowship is, you know, is incredibly encouraging to me as a writer. I think that one thing that this award gives me is, is, is confidence. It also gives me you know, patience in, in, in the sense that I can let projects develop at the pace at which they should develop. This is always an issue for a writer. Um, you're always feeling pressure um, from deadlines or financial pressure, and often you need to let a project unfold at its own pace. And, and I think that, that's one way that I see this, this grant.